Okay, today's lesson is the second lesson on uh, transformation, and we're going to cover reflections today. So our learning objective is to answer the question, what is a reflection? We're still, it's still the covering of the Common Core Learning Standard 8G1, and the vocabulary is reflection, line of reflection, sometimes it's also called line of symmetry. Oops. <clears throat> So sometimes it's line of symmetry and then uh, reflectional symmetry. Okay, a reflection is a transformation that flips an image over a line. Um, and the line that the image is flipped over is called a line of reflection or a line of symmetry. Um, it's more frequently called a line of symmetry. So below is an image um, that is a reflection. So you have your... Actually, we should have some primes here, so this should be E prime, D prime, and A prime, and that indicates that that is the reflection of the image above. Okay, and this line right here is the line of symmetry. Um, so line segment, BC, is the line of symmetry. Um, and we're going to talk more about, in just a minute, about the properties of a reflection. Uh, okay, so the distance between some properties that we've seen in reflection, which you saw today in your investigation, is, is that the distance between the image and a line of reflection is the same for the reflected image and the line of reflection. So the distance between the image and the line of reflection. So let's pick a, a point here. So let's pick D, for instance. So let's pick the point D. To find the distance between a line and a point, you create a perpendicular line. Um, a, a line perpendicular to uh, the line segment that you, we're looking at. So we're creating a line perpendicular to line segment BC uh, that goes through the point D, and that tells us the uh, length uh, or the distance D is from BC. Okay, so that distance is the same as, and we relabeled this as E prime, D prime, A prime to indicate that it was the reflection. So that distance up here, we'll call this d sub 1, is the same as the distance between um, d prime and the line segment bc. So this distance, so we'll call that d2, and what we know is that d1 is equal to d2. Okay, if we did this for another pair of corresponding points, so if I found the distance between a Remember, that's a perpendicular line right there. That's how I found a distance between A and the line of symmetry or the line of reflection. Let's call this D sub 3. That distance is the same as this distance right here. Okay? So that's, and we could do the same thing for E. That distance right here is the same as this distance right here. So that's one property of a reflection. Um, that's actually another way to define a reflection, which is to say that. Um, a reflection is a transformation that flips an image over the line but maintains the distance to that line. So I've not only flipped this over this line, but I have maintained the distance that these points are from that line. Okay, and the property number two is that um, if you connect a point on the image with the corresponding point in the reflected image, so let's talk about that. Let's call again this E prime. Let's connect these two points. What you'll find is that the line, this line we use to connect the corresponding points, will always hit the line of symmetry at a right angle. Okay, I could do that with uh, D and D prime here. These are right angles. Okay, and A and A prime we connect the right angles. I could even pick a random point um, in the triangle. So let's see if I picked a point that was the, the mid-segment between ED and E prime, D prime. And I connected those points right there. Again, it would hit that line of uh, symmetry or the line of reflection at a right angle. Okay, so uh, the way that we reflect a point over a line is um, we would take this point. So let's say that we have this line, line segment BC. Now I'm going to reflect A over... Um, so that it's uh, below and to the right of this line. So the first thing I would want to do is I'd want to uh, draw a line that's perpendicular to line segment BC. Okay, so that's a line that's 
perpendicular. Okay, and I want to match this distance um, on the other side. So I want to continue this line right here. And I'm just going to do this with my hand. You can't see me doing this, but I'm using my fingers to sort of match the distance, estimating. And there would be A prime. Okay, so I don't have to even continue that line further than that. So if I erased all these things that I used, okay, that's the reflection of A across the line of symmetry. All right, again, so if I had a point, what I would do is I would uh, create a perpendicular line. You can do this, so let's say I have B. You can do this with a paper edge or just try to do it by sight. It's probably better to do it with a ruler, I guess. And then continue this line to the other side of the line of symmetry. Take some sort of measurement tool and measure. I'm again using my fingers, but you can use, you know, if you have a if you have a ruler, you can use that as a measurement tool or just the side of a paper if you make a tally mark on it. So measure that distance and that's your the point that's been reflected over the line. Okay? And this again is a reflection of a point in free space, so it's not on, on a coordinate plane. We'll we'll be able to do it on a coordinate plane much easier. Okay, so um, this brings us to this slide. So let's reflect these images over um, over both the x and y axes. So if I have a point, let's talk about a first, and I want to reflect it over the x axis, right? So if I reflect something over the x axis, what actually changes? So again, I'm going to try to draw a line that's per perpendicular to the line of. In this case, our line of symmetry is the x axis. That's going to be our line of symmetry. So if I'm going to reflect it over x-axis, then that's going to be considered our line of symmetry. Okay, so I make a perpendicular line here. I continue here. And it's easier to graph on a coordinate plane because I can match this distance below. So this point becomes here. And that point is A prime. And that distance is the same. And now I can just find the coordinates of A prime by looking at the graph. And it's 2 and negative 2. So let's just back up for a minute and look at these points. Um, a is 2, 2, and A prime is 2, negative 2. Okay, so we're going to develop a, um, a rule with that. Actually, you probably developed it today in class when you were doing, um, when you were doing the investigation. What you'll notice is that when you reflect over, so these are your original coordinates, when you reflect over the x-axis, what ends up happening is you take the same x-coordinate, but you um, negate the y-coordinate. Okay, so this is a description of what happens when you, this is a coordinate description of what happens when you reflect over the x-axis. Now let's do the same thing, but let's reflect this point over the y-axis. So. Um, a, reflect over the y-axis, so I'm going to make a line perpendicular, which is really easy on a graph. I'm going to extend that line like this, and I'm going to mark a distance, so I'm going to match this distance, but on the other side of the line of symmetry. Okay, in this point right here, this is A, we'll say it's A double prime. It's our second transformation on A. Um, and this right here is going to be negative 2, 2. Oops. Okay, and that point is going to be negative 2, 2. Um, so you can see that, again, when you reflect over the y-axis, the rule is that you take your old x-y coordinates and you keep your x-coordinate, actually, you uh, change your x-coordinate to its um, opposite or it's additive inverse and you keep the y coordinate the same okay because when you reflect over the y axis all your the the vertical distance right here doesn't change so these points vertical distance didn't change but what changed is the direction of the horizontal so instead of going to a which was to the right of the origin we go to a double prime which was to the left of the origin Okay, so let's try this same thing with uh, this point B, which starts in quadrant 3. Let's use these rules in order to figure it out. Okay, so here are our rules in red and purple here. 
Okay, if we were going to reflect the uh, B prime over the X axis, let's do it by coordinate now. So B, since it's negative 5, negative 3, if I were going over the X axis, um, this is my description of what would happen there. So I'd take my, uh, I'd leave B prime would be, um, have the same X coordinate and it would find the opposite of the y coordinate. So whoops. So my x coordinate should be negative 5. And my y coordinate should be positive 3. Okay, so we would go uh, negative 5 and positive 3. You'll see it here. Okay, and that's b prime. So let's check to see if it's a um, correct reflection. Okay, it's 3 units up and directly above b. So yep, b prime is a correct um, it's a correct reflection over the x-axis. Now if we were going to reflect it over the y-axis, let's do this in blue here. Um, so if I wanted to get b double prime, I would keep my uh, y-coordinate the same, but I would take the opposite of my x-coordinate. So uh, the opposite of negative 5 is 5, and I'd keep my y-coordinate at negative 3. So let's do that here. I have to sort of extend my graphs are negative 5 or positive 5 and negative 3 this would be b double prime and since this is um, 5 units away to the left of the y-axis this is 5 units away to the right of it okay so make sure that you have those rules down the ones in red and purple on this page um, if you were reflecting a shape you would do pretty much the same thing as you did with the reflecting a point you would take um, the shape and draw a line perpendicular to the line of reflection, carry it to the other side, and use something to mark a distance. Okay, you do this for each point. So I'm just sort of trying to do this by sight, but you would have, ideally you would have, and my D is actually, I'm not going to be able to fit that on there, but my D would be somewhere below essentially you're doing the same thing as you did with every point so you'd end up having something that looked like let's see my a would be somewhere over here a prime it gets a little messy but my d prime would be something like that so here my figure would be well, my figures a little messed up but um, you would do the exact same technique as you would you know as you did with the point you'd make all these per perpendicular lines with a line of symmetry match the distance on one side of the line with the distance on the other side of the line and then connect your shape. But the most important thing for you to know for 8th grade is to learn how to do it on reflecting it over the x-axis and the y-axis because oftentimes these aren't done in free space, they're done um, in the coordinate plane. So if you're reflecting a, sh a shape over the x-axis, essentially, again, you just, you're doing it point-wise, so it's the same as reflecting a point. You just take all the vertices of the figure and Okay, if it's, it's going over the x-axis, the y-coordinates are going to change. So you can either do it by finding the coordinates of a. So a is negative 7 and 3. Oops, negative 7 and 3. And what you do is, um, when you reflect over the x-axis, that changes the y-coordinate. So it keep, keeps the same x-coordinate, but it makes the y-coordinate negative. Um, or it takes the opposite of the y-coordinate, so it goes negative 7, negative 3, so there's a prime. So you can either do it with coordinates or you can do it by sight. I'll do, I'll do d prime with sight. So d is 2 above, so d prime is going to be 2 below. Uh, b prime is 4 above, so... Uh, sorry, b is 4 above, so b prime would be 4 below, and c is 2 above. So C prime will be here, two below. And if we connect these right here, you'd see the same image, just a mirror image of the original over the x-axis. Okay, um, so I wanted to try to reflect this shape because it sort of covers the origin, and one point of it is on the x-axis, which can sometimes confuse people, but... Um, so let's work with uh, B, C, and D first. So since uh, B is one unit above the x-axis, it's actually going to drop down one unit below, and it's going to become 
uh, where where C is. It's going to be the, become the point where C is. And C will actually do the same with B. It will go to the point above. Since C is one below, it's one below, it's going to go one above, but that just lands on B. Okay, so your new C, C prime was your old B, and B prime is your old C. Now D is one unit below uh, the x-axis, so we're going to go one unit above. There's D prime. Okay, let's connect these to sort of see what we have here. Okay, now since A is directly on the x-axis, so it's zero units above, when you tr uh, reflect it right over, it's actually going to land in the same spot. So A doesn't move at all. If a point is on the x-axis and you're asked to uh, reflect it over the x-axis, it just remains the same. So this is your new figure here. Okay, that's the, f the green figure reflected over the x-axis. All right, um, if I wanted to reflect a shape over the y-axis, I would, um, let's see, let me do it in red. Again, I would use, do the ver use the vertices. So I'm reflecting it over the y-axis, so I'm drawing a line through the y-axis and marking the distance on the other side of it. This is two units to the right on the y-axis, so I'm going to go two units to the left to get my a prime. B is two units to the left, or one unit to the left, so I'm going to go one unit to the right along the same uh, vertical distance. So these have the same vertical distance. They have the same y coordinate. The x coordinate is the one that changes. So make sure you understand that when you flip over the x axis, the y coordinate does the changing. And vice versa, when you flip over the x axis, it means that the y coordinate changes not the x coordinate. Okay, so there's b prime, c prime is one unit to the right, so it's uh, c is one unit to the right, so c prime is going to be here. So here is my new figure. Okay. So if you think about it, the part that was on the left hand side here mirrored that same part on the right side. And the original part that was on the right side of the x-axis mirrors itself by being on the left-hand side. Okay. Um, now, to identify lines of symmetry, I sort of um, used a website called Math is Fun. And there was a nice picture of this person's dog. Um, and it says, here my dog Flame has her face made perfectly symmetric with a bit of photo magic. So she's indicating the line of symmetry right here. Okay, the line of symmetry, symmetry um, actually you can use what's called a folding test, which she goes on to explain right here. Um, a f so a folding test means that you can fold one part of the image and it will go exactly over the other part. And that means that that line in which, over which you folded it is a line of symmetry. So she tries to fold the rectangle um, along its diagonal this way, and she notices that the paper doesn't match up with the other side. So that means that the line that she folded in is not a line of symmetry. But if you fold the rectangle this way, and in fact if you fold it the other way like this, those are both lines of symmetry for a rectangle. Some lines of symmetry for a polygon. So the square has uh, one, two, three, four lines of symmetry. The rectangle has the two that we identified. If it's an irregular quadrilateral, there are no lines of symmetry. If you have a kite, another type of quadrilateral, you have one line of symmetry, it's the vertical line right here. And if you have a rhombus, remember, the thing that makes a kite is that you have exactly, you have two separate pairs of um, uh, identical si or sides of identical length. So I mark them, these two sides with one dash and these two sides with two dashes to mean that those, that these two are the same and these two are the same, but these are not the same. Those aren't equal to each other. Okay, a rhombus has all sides of equal length, so it has two lines of symmetry. Um, if we look at other regular polygons, so an equilateral triangle has three lines of symmetry. I can fold it along this line and it would be identical. I can fold it along this line and the other half would meet, would match, or I can fold it along this line, the same thing. Uh, a square, we just went over a square, it has uh, one, two, three, four lines of symmetry. A regular pentagon has five lines of symmetry, and a hexagon has six lines of symmetry. Okay, so there's sort of a, a nice pattern developing 
A regular three-sided figure has three lines of symmetry. A regular polygon with four sides has four lines, and so on. Okay, and I think that's the... Oh, so if we're given a shape and we're asked to identify the lines of symmetry, so let's say, you know, we were given this shape right here, you really want to try to think in your mind, either you can draw the shape on patty paper and see if you can fold it to get identical parts on either side. So, for instance, this would be a line of symmetry right here because you can fold this onto that and you this side would match identically with this side and likewise with this one. So if I had to find a line of symmetry with this um, this flag right here, I could think of, you know, this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four, so it matches actually up nicely with the lines of symmetry of a, a square. Okay, so really, you can either try to do it in your mind, or you can actually print the image out and try to fold it across them. These lines of symmetry are fairly easy to identify, but sometimes they get a little bit more difficult. All right, so that's the end of the lesson today. We talked about uh, lines of, identifying lines of symmetry, how to reflect a figure over the x and y axis, how to reflect a figure in free space over a line of symmetry, using perpendicular lines and distances, and how to reflect a point across the x and y axis with the coordinates, doing it with coordinates or doing it by sight. Um, and finally, how we, um, how we can flip a point over a line of symmetry using perpendicular lines and distances.